Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. So we want to thank our newest Patreon. Yes, we want to say a huge thank you to Miss Heather, our latest Patreon. Thank you. Welcome and thank you for your support. We couldn't do it without you guys. There's been a lot of new people joining us on Patreon. Again, every every video goes up over there. So have you ever rode a New York subway? I have uh, many times, many, 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 many times. And there might be, you know, these visions that come to mind uh, of New York subways. In fact, you know, again, living in Connecticut and growing up 23 miles from New York, uh, I was that that was everything uh, as far as the culture was dominated by New York. You know, it was definitely a New York centric um, viewpoint I had. And we didn't really travel too far uh, until I got to be um, much older. And so for the most part, most of my exploration was in uh, New York, New Jersey, uh, Connecticut, the rest of New England, etc., and, you know, the subways and trains that I was used to, well, it blew my mind when I got to different places and see how clean things can be because, you know, it, it might not be as bad as this always, but it was kind of the norm to see a lot of graffiti, uh, you know, let's just say it, it could use a facelift. But when you look at what the rest of the world has, in, in specific, certain countries, if you look to, say, you know, China, for instance, you know, look at their railroads. <laughs> it's just amazing. For one, they're utilizing, you know, trains that can travel at high speeds. Yes, many European nations have done this as well. And I do think this is a tell. This is a big tell. Uh, what's a tell? Um, well, kind of like showing your cards in poker, you know, kind of like, is he bluffing or is he not bluffing? Well, this, when you look to the money and the way things have been built up in certain uh, countries and yet not in other countries, that's what we would call a tell as you look at China. I mean, they got some cool little in uh, toys look at this thing it reminds me almost of a caterpillar and it's it's jumping from one side to the other we, you know we don't see really cool innovation that much in the united states and there's a super big important purpose for this all the bullet trains that we see you know over in, in not just china but other asian countries as well you know, look to Singapore, uh, look to, uh, say, Dubai, for instance, again, and, and look at how how clean everything is. Now, these are all China that we've been looking at. And as you know, China has been uh, allied with Russia in many ways. And speaking of Russia, you got Tucker Carlson, who has just unhinged some people uh, and maybe expanded some people's uh, concepts of what Russia is. As Tucker Carlson says, Moscow, Moscow, Russia is nicer than any city in the United States during a speech in Dubai. Um, you know, <laughs> that's Tucker saying it. And, and, you know, here comes the media meltdown round two. Absolutely. You know, what's going on right now? Uh I wouldn't even say this is a soft sell. I, I think this is a, 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 a this is a sell. So we have a tell and a sell going on. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they're doing a very, very, very good job of it. I think they have people on the edge of their seats trying to figure out what's going on and, and learning some some things and watching very closely as to what's going on but tucker has been built up over the years i mean he really has quite a reputation for being one to call it call it like it is you know i mean he i think he's spent a lot of time building people's trust in the sense that he's going to take the right side when it comes to almost everything and he's going to point out you know all of the injustices i think that's what people are really looking for and he fit that part perfectly so to have somebody like Tucker go around and doing what he's doing um, to make this sell, I think it's ingenious because of his already built up reputation. But we know that these uh, controllers, they definitely put things into play. They they do things years in advance. And I think that's something that really kind of um, 
puts us at a huge disadvantage is that they understand already what's going to happen when it comes to one cycle after the next because they've seen it before i mean to them they're like yeah we need to get this guy set up you know 10 years in advance because in 10 years he's going to be playing this part so that's kind of what we're up against which well it kind of stinks and let me first say that I'm all for dissolving all, all borders, but first we've got to make sure that we dissolve the United Nations. Right. We dissolve the WHO, uh, the WEF. Uh, you might as well just get rid of the CDC, the FDA here in the U.S., get rid of groups like the Trilateral Commission, get rid of you know different forums out there as well you know that are all controlled by the ultra rich that are actually you know obviously the ones that are pulling many strings but yet they are still having their strings pulled so for for those people that um you know are have been sound asleep this could be very shocking so Tucker says that traveling to other countries over the past week has been radicalizing for him. What was radicalizing, very shocking, very disturbing for me was the city of Moscow, where I've never been, the biggest city in Europe. Yes, Moscow's in Europe. It's the biggest city in Europe. And it's so much nicer than any city back in my country. I had no idea. And this is why when you think back to where people will say, oh, I live in the greatest country in the world. We're the best in the world. Everybody wants to be here. Not necessarily. And at what? I mean, that's such a generic statement coming from ego and pride. And that's exactly where they want you. They want everybody to be operating off of ego and pride because it's very easy to manipulate people that are prideful and egoic. It's just so simple. All you got to do is tweak them in the right direction and they're ready to go off and fight. Yeah, absolutely. If you can't use your subway, for example, as many people are afraid to in New York City because it's too dangerous, you have to wonder, isn't it the ultimate ultimate measure of leadership? It's radicalizing for an American to go to Moscow. I didn't know that. I learned it this week to Singapore, to Tokyo, to Dubai, and Abu Dhabi because these cities, no matter how we're told they're run on and what principles they're run, they're wonderful places to live that don't have rampant inflation. You know, take a note of what they are saying. And and I think about the soft sell that as as a person that has maybe two vices in this world left of, of significance, coffee and, and watching mixed martial arts. Um, you know, those are the things that I'm still addicted to. Uh, and, you know, no, no alcohol, no mind altering substances, legal or otherwise. But yeah, love. I love MMA and I love coffee. Now, what has MMA, what has the UFC done to me? It's introduced me in depth to places like Abu Dhabi. They're always having events over there. Why? Because they want you to get f familiar with it. They want you to see how beautiful it is. Singapore is a beautiful place. It really is. I mean, you know, there's a lot of ugliness in these steel and concrete cities. And then there are some cities that are designed uh, with such an attention to detail that we just don't see in other places. Not to say there's not nice little nooks in different places. I love Charleston. Um, I love um, Santa Fe, New Mexico. It's, it's a beautiful little uh, city and and uh, you know there's other St. Augustine you know Savannah Georgia you know Boston is fun when you go on like the Patriot Trail things like that but when you look at the United States it's run down on purpose they know they're going to wipe the slate clean with this country and we will be doing a follow-up video to give you guys an update I just wanted to preface it with this video um, and preface it with showing how they are selling us. What What is he saying? Okay, well, you know, it, it, it might be distasteful to you because you've grown up with the idea that living in a socialist or communist uh, country is something that you don't ever want to do, but they have it better than us. So they're trying to get us to accept it. And, and here you go, you know, he says, we just returned from McDonald's in Moscow. And firstly, the price, okay, I admit it, I hadn't been to fast food in a long time, trying to maintain a girlish figure, also does not give me pleasure. I'm 54, so I probably shouldn't eat this nonsense, but I'm not entirely aware of the price, but I'm not entirely aware of the prices, but here's how much it costs in Moscow. 
six four seven rub i think th uh, rubles i think that's exactly seven dollars to seven dollars and five cents for two cheeseburgers large fries large coke large piece of chocolate cake and putin banned gmo foods in russia four years ago that is interesting let's get to the fries first McDonald's most famous product is French fries. Everything's fine. They're tasty. That's it. Siberian fries. Everybody knows what McDonald's fries taste like, so it won't be difficult to evaluate this. Well, that's great. Exactly the same. Fine. The fries are a winner. Now I have recognizable products. Like every American has eaten a cheeseburger from McDonald's. Okay, it's a Siberian cheeseburger in McDonald's shell. Oh, great. Similar. My first thought, I shouldn't eat this crap. But I like it, and I think they're the same small chopped onions as in the United States. Everything is fine. I'm brandishing a McBreakfast, which was actually a McLunch. It was really a non-GMO version. So why do they get non-GMO and we get nothing but GMOs? Well, because, again, you know, this is part of the system. They're bringing down the United States. They're going to uh, redo it totally. And they're going to remake it in the image of maybe not necessarily Russia, but more what you see in China. Here you go. Uh, radical, radicalization. And here he is shopping and he's talking about how he would have spent 400 and something bucks in the U.S. And it was like 100 and, and something. And whoa, wait a minute. You're telling me it's only 25 percent of the cost? For the same food that we're, that I'm spending so much on in the U.S., why are we paying so much more when there's sanctions going on against Russia? Because the realization is the, the destruction of the U.S. is what they want, not the, not not necessarily the destruction of the BRICS nations. And I word that carefully um, because you know, again, they're shifting. If you've ever noticed, Uncle Klaus has has always put. G up as his star pupil, his bright shining yellow star in that Red Sea background. Uh, this is what a functioning society looks like. Unlike in American and other Western series, there's no homeless people, no litter, no knives, no violence in metro stations in Moscow. They're really selling it hard. You'll get used to the, the minus 20 wind chills. That doesn't take too long to get used to that. Uh, yeah, we have that in some places in the U.S. <clears throat> but why is American society so decadent? And it, it's, it's again, they're taking down Rome and they take it down from the inside. It's the leadership, obviously, you know. And the, the reality is it's not that we've been infiltrated. No, the leadership's always been in place. They're just done with this. They're done with this phase. Now, you know, America has served its purpose. America was the policeman of the world. 2017, again, we were in 95% of the countries on the planet with a military presence. Now, you will see China in 95% of the countries of the world with a military presence. They're just basically pa passing the ball off. This is all they are doing is passing the ball off. Now, they want to sell you. Remember, you know, the golden days, look back to the 50s for those that can even conceive of such things from their parents or maybe grandparents or maybe some of you great grandparents. <laughs> but when things were kind of wholesome and clean and you didn't worry about things, when, you know, there was beauty all around you. And yes, I, I do think when you look to Russia, when you look to some of the cities and stuff, um, when we look to some of the cathedrals and stuff, I think we are seeing Tartaria as well. And that's something totally, totally different. As you see a communist flag in the background and that grandizing glor glorification of the motherland, whether, whether that's, you know, the United States, Germany, uh, it, it, Russia, China, it, all it serves a purpose is, is of radicalizing people inside it to, to think that their nation is the best. And then when you step out and you realize, well, what are we the best at? Well, we've been the best at war, and that's what their purpose was for us. Now, mm -mm, we're, w there's a reason for all of this. Everything's about to change. It's going to change so radical, and again, there will be no greater change than for those of us that are in NATO countries and perhaps no greater change 
Then for those of us that are in the U.S. and the U.K., um, I think you could add Canada and New Zealand and Australia to that mix to a little bit lesser degree. So Tucker reportedly met and interviewed Tara Reid and Edward Snowden in Moscow. He's planning on releasing it in the coming days. You remember Steven Seagal, he's, he's actually, I think he is either... Uh, a Russian citizen now or he is dual citizenship I'm not sure we'd have to look up one of you guys I'm sure knows you know again this has been planned for a long time a long time these things are in the mix for generations so when you look on and again you look at places like Abu Dhabi out in the middle of a desert they put it up so quick Places like Singapore, so beautiful, and and the mega cities in China, which are so neat, functioning, clean. There's a reason, and you look at the U.S. and the infrastructure's crumbling, bridges are falling apart, roadways are a joke. If, if drive through New York on I-95, it's ridiculous. Why did they do this? Why have they left it that way? Because they're going to totally remake it. Totally. The U.S. is is going to be completely reworked like you have never seen in your lifetime or mine. No, and not even in our parents' or grandparents' lifetimes. There, there is massive change, and that massive change is, is right on our doorstep and literally uh, months away at the very most. Mm-hmm. You know, I look at uh, Tucker Carlson, and he really is in the mainstream, and he's just big. He's huge, and what is his job? His job is to make things look um, very palatable for change. It's to create a path of least resistance. That's what I feel he's there to do. And help people think that, oh, this is okay and this is going to be a better thing. It's all about the psychological warfare here. It's all about setting people's minds up so that they just go along to get along. And if they think it's going to be better, well, now with Tucker Carlson, he's showing everybody, oh, it's going to be better. So creating that path of least resistance and creating people who are not critical thinkers, who are not trying to think outside the box and find a way to make it on their own. Because I I feel strongly in past cycles, they have learned it's much easier to do these twists and turns if they can get the human the human on board with it. So, you know, I, I think they look at us no different than like training dogs. I, I really don't think that we're any different to the controllers. Um, we just they just have to put some trinkets in front of us and explain how things are going to be better and even show us and just so many people who are in the mainstream and asleep. They're just going to go along with it. And that makes their job. A lot easier it, it's sad but that's that's what that's what I see so I wanted to separate these segments and this is kind of a preface for uh, the the second video that's going to be an update on stuff that uh, we've been talking about for a long time and you know just some new information has come in but it is kind of confirming of, of what we've been thinking for a long time with some new twists and turns um, one of the things I want to give you is, you know, there's so many different ways of looking at things. And I saw somebody say, well, Nostradamus predicted like a 29 year war. And I did have somebody, uh, in that I know is in the Illuminati, uh, tell me the same thing that they planned on decades of, of WW3. Um, I don't think so. I think that is completely, um, something that they want to put out there to get us going down a, another incorrect rabbit hole. I've always felt that this stage, as far as the open conflict, is going to be relatively short. But the open conflict also, and when we're talking about the current nations of the world, because we're transitioning from those current nations of the world to a system that m- will ultimately they've told us you know corporations will be more powerful than nations nations are getting to the point where even china and russia uh these nation states are going to be inconsequential and and they're moving to a different part of their plan they have to herd the sheep in they have to herd the sheep into beautiful cities like this 
And, you know, these cities that they're building that they've spent so much money on and have built them relatively quickly, when you look at it in the bigger scheme of things popping up out of the blue, you know, these these are what they want to transform into uh, these, you know, cell cities where they will be ultimately... Um, you will not be able to move freely. You will not be able to move freely at all. And it, you are going to be tied to the technology. And the technology will be uh, all over you, in you, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And you won't be able to move freely. They're, they're going to a phase where, you know, humanity no longer travels uh, via airplanes in the sky. And, you know, there's a reason for this because... You know, again, they need so many to man these uh, these particular areas of manufacturing uh, all the things they need, which so much of what they need is is literally pure energy, and it literally is you and me and anybody that's going to go along with the agenda. So after, you know, the whip, you dangle the carrot, and the carrot's being dangled, and they want you to buy into this. Because what they're setting us up for is is an intense period of absolute chaos, and as I've been saying, I do think this is the case. You know that the most trying year, perhaps the most trying year for humanity, is 2024, perhaps a little bit into 2025, and after that, everything has changed. It's this is this this is it. This is their go time. This is when they get, they're going to flick the switch. They're going to flip the switch. So be prepared when things uh, go dark, and we will elaborate more on the next video. Um, source bless and namaste. Absolutely. Look forward to your comments. Much love. Stay prepared, guys.